There's a very good chance, as you notice the number of this card, Unit 4, Card 1, that we're not actually on Unit 4. We're actually j still in Unit 1, or maybe we're in between Unit 1 and Unit 2. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Maybe we're doing this first. Uh, uh, who knows? Depends on uh, what the year looks like. But uh, the reason we're doing this early is because political ideology is a foundational idea in government. And if you don't understand ideology, then it's sometimes hard to write about a graph, a chart, have ideas about a poll and what that means because you don't understand like the different sides of political ideology in the United States. So we're going to be looking at this early in the year, despite the fact that it's unit four, we might be just doing the beginning of the unit, not the whole unit four, just so we understand ideology really well. And then that'll be a basis for analysis throughout the rest of the year and even in your writing. So political ideology, flip over backside as always, if I go too fast, pause and catch up. All right, here we go. So political ideology, what is ideology? Ideology is a set of basic beliefs, right? Set of basic beliefs about the political, economic, social, and cultural affairs. Set of basic beliefs about the political, economic, and social, and cultural affairs. And, and by the way, just be clear, like people aren't necessarily all um, consistent in their, in their ideology. Um, but some are. Matter of fact, we call the people that are really consistent in their ideology, um, they may classify themselves as a liberal or as a conservative. If you're not consistent in your ideology, then you may not necessarily take one of these labels or really fit into one of them. Maybe you're more um, you know, libertarian. There's another phrase, which uh, libertarian is another ideology that kind of is a mix of the two. We'll do that later in unit four. Um, or maybe you're just more of a moderate. Um, or maybe you just don't follow politics at all, so you don't you haven't really thought about it at all. I don't know if I'm a conservative or a liberal. I have no clue what I am. Well, maybe by going through what we're about to do in this unit, you'll figure it out. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, in America, there there is a liberal party and a more conservative party, a more liberal party and a more conservative party, and they are the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. Um, you may hear the phrase left wing or left or right wing and the right. And those are phrases that actually uh, harken all the way back to the French Revolution over 200 years ago. Um, so Democrat Party is the liberal party in America, and the conservative party in America is the Republican Party. So flip. Uh, uh, let's look at that real quick. You don't have to flip or anything. All right, um, and, and the reason we get this word left and right comes from the French National Assembly in 1789, the uh, revolutionaries who, by the way, in um, in France, the Republicans in France actually were the left party. And so they sat on the left and then on the right hand side were the conservatives and they were the pro monarchists. Um, and so they were, uh, on the right hand side. And so you get this idea of right, um, being conservative and left being liberal. And that's kind of lasted despite the fact that like Republican in France means something different than Republican in America. So anyway, that's where the phrase comes from. All right, uh, and, just, and let me just read this. This comes from a website that's that's a pretty fair and balanced site. I think it does a good job describing the parties. You don't have to write this, but just get an idea here. So liberals believe in government action to achieve equality, uh, equal opportunity, and equality for all. They believe it's the duty of government to alleviate social ills, to protect civil liberties, and individual and human rights. They believe the role of government should be to guarantee that no one is in need. Liberal policies generally emphasize the need for government to solve problems. So really the key here is government um, solutions to problems in our society. That, that's what it means to be on the left. That's generally what liberals believe. So if, you're, if you believe that like government is really needed to solve social problems, then, then that's the liberal idea. Now let's look at conservative idea. Conservatives believe in personal responsibility, limited government, free markets, meaning like freely selling goods on the marketplace, individual liberty, traditional American values, and a strong national defense. They believe the role of government should be to provide people the freedom necessary to pursue their own goals. Conservative policies generally emphasize empowerment of the individual to solve problems. So if you had to sum up the, 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 the right, it's all on this whole idea of the individual and, and the individual is best able to solve their problems, not the government. And so that really solves it up. Now, by the way, there's a ton of intolerance and hatred toward each side in America. And I think the number one thing that helps with people treating each other in a much more civil way in court, court, uh, according to politics is one, understanding what the each side believes. Like when you just understand that each side has legitimate views 
in philosophies of the world, then you become a much more tolerant person. It also helps, by the way, to actually know someone um, and befriend someone who is a liberal, if you're a conservative, and befriend someone and become with someone who's a conservative if you're a liberal. So that, that also helps as well. Of course, the, the last thing is stay off Twitter, and that probably will help as well. <laughs> All right, good. Here we go. All right. Um, so let's first look at liberalism 4.2. 4.2, liberalism. Let's get a little more in depth about what it means to be a liberal or what liberalism is. All right, so there's a, a, a economist slash political philosopher who talked about the, the uh, um, visions um, of ideology. His name is Thomas Sowell. And he talked about, uncon- and I read this book in college, and it was a, a good book. It kind of just outlined like the two different visions, and it helped me really understand what the ideologies believed. And he talked about constrained and unconstrained visions and how they're different. And so an unconstrained vision is more what liberals have. What do we mean by unconstrained? Well, um, one, they think it's unconstrained because they believe human nature is changeable. Human nature is changeable. Like we can actually create better human beings if we do the right policies. That That's what unconstrained means. It, human nature is changeable. Um, And so their explanation of evil, like why do bad things happen? You know, why, why does crime happen? Why does murder happen? Why is the theft happen? Why are some people poor? They explain that because by institutions who have caused bad outcomes. So the evil is institutional. That's the problem. And that's caused bad outcomes. There is also a tendency on the liberal side on the left, that they believe generally good things happen naturally, if not for bad actors. And there's not really an innate nature to humans. Humans aren't like kind of a fixed product and we all tend to act the same, that we can actually become better. And so therefore, better policy means better outcomes for people um, and in terms of uh, our, our innate nature. So there's like that hope that, that humans can, you know, um, become better people. All right, so good happens naturally, if not for bad actors. Um, the solution to this, like how do we fix this then? Well, government is essential to solve problems. We gotta have better institutions and therefore we end up with better people. So government is at the, at the heart of being able to fix what's wrong in society. Uh, government action must ensure equality. Government action must ensure opportunity. And also, government must ensure that no one is in need. So if people are poor, government needs to take really rigorous action to make sure um, that there is some sort of policy that takes care of these people. So there'd be a, be obviously a pretty major support for you know welfare or even generous welfare type programs under liberalism. All right, so... Uh, pause if you need to, but that's kind of a good overview of liberalism in terms of the philosophy they have toward government. All right, conservatism, 4.3. 4.3. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, all right, conservatism, 4.3. Uh, conservatism has what's called a constrained vision. Conservatives believe human nature is unchangeable, that Humans 2,000 years ago in terms of how we behave and our motives really aren't much different than the motives that people have today. Um, that, that you just you can't really change human nature very much. Um, and so how do they explain evil? Like how do, how do two people do bad things? Well, evil of the world is explained by limited and unhappy choices that each of us have. And the fact that morally and intellectually we have limitations. So um, bottom, line, bottom line, what does it all mean? Um, we make bad choices and some of us, you know, are limited in what sort of things we can do. And, uh, and, you know, maybe because of where we grew up or, or, um, you know, how good a schooling we had or didn't have. And, uh, therefore we make bad choices. And and so choice, like choice becomes a huge part of conservatism that you personally are responsible for the choices you make. It's not necessarily the institutions that are out there. It's more um, bad choices. And if the institutions are the problem, well, that's because a bunch of bad people got in and made bad choices. Um, that would be a conservative argument. Um, so they believe that our nature is flawed, 
Um, the idea of, of the, the traditional idea, which is rooted more in, in, in religion probably than anything, but just traditionally believe that humans can do good, but they often do bad. You know, the good and bad, they have the capability to do it. Every single one of us capable of doing good things, but also doing bad things. Um, and by the way, therefore, good things don't just happen automatically. They happen because you choose to make good decisions. So again, there's a lot of this individual responsibility. And you notice when we did the philosophy earlier, there's that idea in conservatism of like, um, you know, individual choice when I read that little paragraph on it. So the solutions, what do you, so if, if, if making bad choices uh, in uh, the fact that we're all inherently limited somehow, um, some of us are good at fixing things and some of us aren't. Some of us are good at reading and, and memorizing things and some of us aren't. Those limitations we have, what are the solutions? Moral traditions, like traditions of right and wrong. That often, by the way, again, I, I mentioned in conservatism, church is probably a, a pretty traditional and conservative um, avenue for teaching, you know, good choicing, good choices, uh, family, strong families, um, would be a reason to make sure because families, strong families mean that people are more likely to make good decisions and passing on values that lead to success. And then a free marketplace where people are able to buy and sell goods. And if they want to start a business, they can and innovate and competition. These actually make, uh, you know, bring out the best in humans rather than bring out the worst in humans. Again, a conservative vision of the world. Um, and so therefore, if you want a better society, government needs to empower the indiv individual freedom to solve their own problems. And the reason, by the way, conservatives don't like government is because they're like, all right, look, humans are flawed and a lot of people make bad decisions, which includes all the people who are in government. So you're better. They just trust the individual much more likely to make a better decision for themselves than somebody who's in government who they don't even know. And then therefore, limited government is a real um, major uh, point here in conservatism. And lastly, personal responsibility, which I think I've kind of hit on already. Um, the idea that you're responsible to make good choices. Um, and if you, you know, sometimes the good choice is, you, you know, two bad choices, you're going to make the one that's the least worst. Um, but personal responsibility is a big emphasis in conservatism. Um, all right, cool. So conservatives might be a little more questionable about welfare programs if the welfare program especially doesn't have some limitation on it. Um, and it, it, you know, it, it should, uh, make sure people are being responsible and looking for work or being retrained so that way they can get their own job. Um, you know, the old saying, uh, give a man a fish and he eats for a day, but teach him how to fish and he eats for a life. That, that, that is a, that, that saying right there is rooted in, a conservative view of the world. All right. Um, there you go. Hopefully that helps you understand just like the big picture of conservative versus liberal. That's my point. That's my goal. And then we're going to be looking here at some different ideas in America and how the uh, Republicans and, and Democrats maybe differ on how that idea looks in the actual real world. All right. Thanks. This is it for this lesson. Go practice this. Thanks. Bye.